Hello, welcome to the video for what is apply and receive point damage nodes. I've gone ahead and created a quick little example here. Let's run it. We're going to shoot our left box. We can see the health be taken off 100 each time. And if we shoot our mesh on the right, we're going to find it fractures because this is a destructible mesh and we've done enough damage to cause the destruction. So let's go ahead and see how this works. For this example, we can ignore the first three nodes. This is me basically pushing a button, doing the line trace forward, and then hitting something and getting the results. What we care about is what we hit and what we're going to do with it. So the apply point damage, it's one of the apply damage nodes that comes with the pawn class. It has the apply point damage and the receive point damage event. And basically this allows us to easily receive and send, receive, yeah, send and receive damage easily. It's just as simple as that. So how does it work? Well, the apply point damage has three nodes, three inputs that are going to be required with the rest being optional. We're going to go and cover those right now. Damaged actor is going to be the actor you want to receive this damage. For example, we're passing in what we hit with our line trace. Base damage is optional. By default, it comes with zero and you can leave it at zero. It's just a float and it will pass along any value you put here. Hit from direction. This is basically the direction where this hit came from. You can pass along any vector. You can do the trace start, for example, which I'm using here, or you could use the impact point. Any of those work perfectly fine. The next one that's required is going to be hit info. This is basically your hit out from your trace result. It's going to be required because it's going to take this information, break it apart, and give you useful things, useful outputs in your event, which we'll see in a minute. The next three are optional. Event instigator, basically who shot the weapon. Normally it's the player controller because the player shot the weapon, the player did damage. In the case of something else like a fire trap, you could just leave this as self if the fire trap is creating the damage or leave it alone if you're not going to use it. Damage causer is basically what caused the damage. This could be a grenade fired from a weapon. The player fires the weapon, they instigated it. The grenade caused the damage when it exploded. Damage type class takes a damage type in. It is completely optional. If you don't put anything in, it's just, it's just going to pass the generic damage type itself. So inside of our receiving event, which is gonna be our actor, you're gonna want one of these two nodes, either the any damage or the point damage. If you use the any damage, which is what I'm using in my example, it's going to ignore all of the extra things passed along because it's a point damage and basically just work as generic damage. You're not gonna get where it came from or where it hit. So in our case, as you saw, when we run this, we're simply removing 100 damage because that's all the information we have. Now, if we hook up our point damage node, what you're going to see is, first of all, we're going to have more information because I've set it up to show more information. Plus, you're going to see the health go down twice. The any damage node and the point damage node will both fire if you are doing point damage. So keep that in mind. Let's go and unhook, unhook the any damage and look at just the point damage. Now, where do we get these from? Well, let's delete the any damage and I'll show you. In your functions, you can override any damage because this comes built in with the actor, or you can type in damage and you'll find right, oh, let's just type in any, oh, let's just write um, any damage makes it easier. There we go. You'll find add event, game, damage, event any damage. It'll add the node in and I've added to our event graph. And if you notice, if I hit the right button, try this again, we can no longer override any damage because we've already overridden it. So let's use our actual point damage. So incoming, we're gonna find all the same basic things. We're gonna find the damage amount we passed, the damage type we passed if we used it, the hit location, which is basically where on this actor did the trace hit? Where was it passed along at? Where's this damage hit on our, on our mesh or our collision volume? 
the normal for the hit. This is useful, for example, if you want to have someone shoot at a wall and then you want to put a bullet hole in the wall. The hit normal will give you the normal facing direction so you can make sure your decal is properly placed and facing the correct direction. You have the hit component. This is basically going to be the component that was hit. You have the bone name. If any bones were hit in our hit result, it will show the bone name. The shot from direction. This is the direct this is the hit from direction that we pass along. So this is going to be our shot from direction in case we want to know where it was shot from. Maybe we want a specific sound or a specific indicator on your radar, maybe when you're shot. Then you have the instigated by and the damage causer, which again are completely optional and they're just simply passed along from here. So as you can see from my example, I just used our hit location and put it on the screen. So you'll notice if I go over here and shoot here, we have one hit location, but every time I change it, our location value is going to change. And we could of course use that if we need to know where or what was hit on our object. Now, when I said, if you notice here, it is applying, assuming I don't fall off, it is applying damage to our destructible mesh. You need to use a point damage or radial damage to do damage to a destructible mesh. And all it's really doing here, because this is something you might find interesting, if I go into my destructible mesh, I have nothing in my graph at all. All it's doing is passing along the point damage event, it's passing along the damage amount, and it's using the damage type Assuming I can find, there we go, damage type, oh, of course, there we go. It's passing, and it's a, it's a stupid Visual Studio. That was, let me pull up a generic one. Let's fix this. Okay, so if we go into our classes for damage type, if we pull up our generic damage type, it's going to pass along this information here. The type of damage, a fall off, rigid body interaction, and destruction interactive. So it's passing along the destructible damage information, even though we're not, do not have an apply damage event inside of our destructible mesh. It's just the way destructible meshes work. They inherently have damage thresholds. Any damage type hitting them will affect them. Now, one thing that is nice is, if you notice here, nothing is happening to my object when I shoot it. If I go into my destructible, let me pull up my example here. There we go, Pyre standard. I created a special damage type called dis explosion. It's to simulate a explosion. Here we have our rigid body and our destruction impulses and damage amounts. If I was to change to say something like a thousand, let's go with five thousand. Why not? And I told it to radial damage velocity change. Well, this isn't going to work for what I want, unfortunately, because we're not using radial damage, but we'll see that in a second. So anyways, this is going to be, you can ignore that. This is going to be how the point damage works. It's just like our regular damage with the only difference being it's going to pass along where it came from and what it hit as well as anything it did hit when it does the damage. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.